15 deals Shark Tank regret not taking. <laughs> Guys, I mean, I'm out. But before we begin, we hope to see you stay until the end as you won't want to miss out on what we have to show you in today's video. Also, consider subscribing to our channel, clicking that notification bell to be notified of any future videos, and comment SHARK to be entered into our $100 Amazon gift card giveaway. My name's James Martin. I'm CEO and founder of Copa Divino. Number 15, Copa Divino. At one point, considering the biggest miss the Sharks had on the show, Copa de Vino brings you wine by the glass. By an entrepreneur so confident that he refused offers from the Sharks in two separate appearances. But if you happen to see James Martin pitch his product, then you might understand why a deal was never made. Despite being an awful person, however, Copa de Vino experienced a out of sales following his first pitch in 2011, growing from $600,000 in total sales to nearly 5 million before the year was even over. By 2016, the company was earning roughly 15 million annually, allowing James Martin to make his second pitch to the Sharks. On, on right now, contracts of over 15 to $20 million on private label projects with 7-Eleven, with Target, with the, some of the biggest wine companies in the world. Really though, it was more of a battle between entrepreneurs and his way of shoving his success in their faces. Even so, Kevin's admitted to Martin being the one that got away, which might explain his interest in Zipix wine, another wine by the glass brand that appeared on the show on season six. My product is the Doorbot. I'm seeking $700,000 for a 10% stake in the company. Number 14, Ring, AKA Doorbot. Originally pitched as the Dorban, entrepreneur Jamie Siminoff introduced the product as a revamp home security system in a place of a doorbell. Equipped with a camera, Ring streams footage of your entrance to your tablet or smartphone. It was a unique idea. However, Jamie didn't have the numbers to back the product up, or a $7 million valuation. Kevin was the only investor to make an offer, but Jamie declined. On the upside, however, Dorbot did attract a large number of investors outside of the tank, which led the company to reach $3 million in sales the following year, raising more than $100 million from their investors in 2015, including Richard Branson and Qualcomm Ventures. Dorbot has rebranded into the sleeker Ring, and as of February 2018, has been purchased by Amazon for more than $1 billion. It's a wonderful outcome, it's a great thing. You know, I'm not jealous of it. Do, do I wish I had a piece of the deal? Of course. Making it the biggest upset in Shark Tank history to date. Coffee Meets Bagel is here to profoundly change how people discover and fall in love. Number 13, Coffee Meets Bagel. Tinder, Match, She Harmony, Christian Mingle, FarmersOnly.com. So what's another dating site? Coffee Meets Bagel isn't much like the rest. Founded by sisters Aram, Dawoon, and Su Kane, Coffee Meets Bagel's unique concept allows users to match with friends of friends, so there's at least that mutual connection. The idea was there, but the results were lackluster, with the revenue being in the negative the year prior. And even with a predicted 10 million next year, it would only break even. Most of the sharks dropped out, of course, but Mark came in strong with the biggest offer the show has ever seen. Granted, the Kang sisters did decline, and while no offers were finalized, Cuban's interest did draw in other investors like No Tomorrow, allowing the brand to raise $7.8 million through a funding campaign by February 2015. Due to the app's seamlessly endless marketing exposure, Coffee Meets Bagel continues to grow at a consistent rate, with approximately 15 million users to date. Later, Tinder. Save 20% and get free weekday delivery on our entire Mother's Day collection. Number 12, The Books Company. Through Amazon, it's been shown that online realtors are dominant in the consumer market. By getting rid of the middle person, aka the realtors and distributors, the product becomes far cheaper. Taking advantage of this opportunity, John Tavis developed the Books Company and pitched his online floral arrangement delivery service to the Sharks in season five. At the time, the idea of delivering flowers was unheard of, and it didn't seem very practical considering shipping would take a minimum of six days. Well, at the time. But what's most confusing about the pitch was Barbara's judgment over the name. I'm pretty sure a nine-year-old could spell Books Barbara. Anyways, once the segment aired, within two months' time, John received 23 million from a small group of investors within two years. That number grew to 44 million, with one investor being Robert Herjavec after realizing the values Books offered the customers. Hi Sharks, I'm Brooks. I'm Tanner. Number 11, Proof Eyewear. 
Appearing in season four of Shark Tank, brothers Taylor Brooks and Tanner Dame traveled all the way from Idaho to pitch their handcrafted, wooden framed, environmental friendly eyewear. At first sight, they were impressed with Proof's eyewear sales records, as well as their unique product. And while Kevin O'Leary and Robert Hertzbeck made separate offers, neither were what the brothers were looking for. Instead, the Dame brothers proudly forged ahead without shark funding. Pun intended, by the way, thanks to the group's 15 minutes of fame. It allowed Proof to earn more than two. 2.5 million in revenue the same year. They've since opened a flagship store in Bose, Idaho, and there are over 1,000 stores across North America, and have reached their way into markets overseas. Those accomplishments are even more impressive when you realize they've crossed more than 10 million in overall sales since their pitch in 2013. Number 10, Coat Checks. By Derek Paquet's definition, Coat Checks has remarkably turned an inconvenience into an opportunity. The 20-something entrepreneur walked his way into Shark Tank in 2012 to pitch his ticket-free Coat Checks system, which was surprisingly brave considering he had zero sales under his belt at the time. Despite this bump in the road, however, Derek still received an offer from Mark Cuban for $200,000, but declined as he was only willing to offer 10% equity. Since his appearance on the show, though, Derek's managed to pick up several loyal investors to help further the fund for Coat Checks, as he has managed to maintain an impressive list of contracts with popular venues in New York City, including Madison Square Garden, the Barclays Center, Webster Hall, and Bounce Sporting Club, among others. I'm down here in Chauvin, Louisiana, at the Indian Ridge Shrimp Processing Plant, where if I'm making a perfect shrimp burger, I need the perfect shrimp right out of the Gulf of Mexico. Number nine, Chef Big Shake, aka CBS Foods. Hamburgers, chicken burgers, veggie burgers, fish burgers, shrimp burgers? Yeah, that's a real product, and apparently it tastes fantastic. When Chef Sean Davis appeared in season two and proposed his unique take on the shrimp burger, the sharks ate it up, literally. However, as we've learned from watching Shark Tank, a bad valuation can easily cost someone a deal. In the end, the sharks weren't content with the numbers, so Davis left empty-handed. It's not to say his head wasn't held high in their praise over his product, and even the sharks were hopeful for Sean's success. Not long after, a local group of investors watched Davis' pitch and made him a better offer. In less than a year, Chef Big Shake was in over 800 stores across the United States, 2,500 now, causing sales to lump from 30K in 2011 to over 5 million annually. Just goes to show why someone shouldn't give up on their dreams. Hi, I'm Lena Phoenix, and I am the owner of Zero Shoes. And I'm Steven Sashin, I'm the CEO. Number eight, Zero Shoes. Essentially walking barefoot into the shark tank, these two self-proclaimed long-haired aging hippie athletes wowed a lot of people at home, but sadly not our investors. Pitching their product in season four, Zero Shoes are an ultra-minimal stylish sandal intended to make you feel like you're walking or running barefoot. The couple's biggest downfall during their pitch though was Steven Sashin's and Lena Phoenix's predicted $5 million valuation. Kevin was the only one willing to take a bite, but even with so much financial experience under their belts, they just never saw the potential that Steven and Lena did. Now comes the Shark Tank effect, where Zero Shoes sell more in a week than they would have in three months. In 2015, they sold 1.5 million in product, and in two years, they've expanded enormously, grossing 5.2 million in 2017. Not bad for just a piece of rubber and some strings. We're the co-founders of the Cell Helmet brand, and we're seeking a $160,000 investment for 20% equity in our company. Number seven, Cell Helmet. Everyone has dropped their smartphone at one point or another, and it feels like they keep on getting easier and easier to break. So why not have some type of insurance for it? Coming in with a solution, David Artuso and Mike Kane pitched their idea for a tougher phone case, which might still break, but it comes with a guaranteed repair and replacement warranty. And that's the beauty of Cell Helmet. Unfortunately, the Sharks viewed it as a flawed system, just waiting for fraudsters. And the idea could be easily done by other much larger companies. So their dreams, much like our phone screens, were shattered. After the episode aired, however, Artuso and Kane found their inboxes filled with offers from investors, pounced on the opportunity, and now are available in over 3,000 stores across the United States. Echo Valley Meats makes the best meat you'll ever eat. We specialize in that old-fashioned butcher shop quality. Number six, Echo Valley Meats. A meat connoisseur in his own right, David Alwyn, has always had a knack for making good food. And it's a skill that he displays strongly during his time on the show in season four. The product was fantastic, and the sharks literally ate it up, but in the end, Alwyn's biggest problem proved to be his lack of skill as a presenter and entrepreneur. Sure, he came in with a modest 190,000 in sales. However, he has no clear understanding of a business plan and barely knew his customer base. Unlike some entrepreneurs though, David Alwyn took the sharks' feedback and turned it into an opportunity. Echo Valley gained a 
massive market exposure after their appearance on Shark Tank, racking up close to 1.4 million in sales the following year. Alwyn took this as a chance to redeem himself, did some major turnarounds by putting more focus into mail order, and returned to the Shark Tanks in season six to strike a deal with Mark Cuban. Don't you just love a happy ending? Hello, my name is Jeff Stroop. I'm the owner of Hycon LLC. Number five. Hikon LLC. Appearing in the second season of Shark Tank, Jeff Stroop performed an amazing pitch for his Firehose hardware manufacturing company when he asked for $500,000 for a 40% equity stake at Hikon LLC. Stroop demonstrated firsthand that his innovative hydrant connector can make a huge difference for firefighters by shaving off valuable seconds from the time it takes to connect a hose to a fire hydrant, potentially saving lives. Cuban expressed his own vision for the company, though, and made an offer to buy out Stroop for $1.25 million alongside a three-year, $300,000 employment contract and 7.5% royalties. It goes without saying that he would have been well off for a long time, and in the heat of the moment, agreed to the deal. Off screen, however, the deal fell through, allowing Jeff Stroop to grow his business, eventually making Hikon LLC a multi-million dollar business. Have you built this? It's actually being converted in Detroit right now. Oh, that is such a bad idea. Number four. Lip Bar. With top brands ranging from L'Oreal to LA to Estee Lauder, the beauty industry is like a minefield for newcomers. Entrepreneurs Melissa Butler and Roscoe Spears were determined, however, and pitched their extensively colored line of lipsticks. Despite the questionable list of shades available, the product's all-natural, high-quality takes on things impressed the sharks. Though, due to the duo's lack of past and future projected sales, along with a downright confusing marketing strategy, the sharks didn't budge. You only have so many minutes on Earth, don't waste them trying to sell lipstick. On the other hand, the girl's pitch attracted the attention of numerous magazines like Cosmetolitan and Ebony, allowing Lip Bar to launch their own tour to further spread their brand. As of 2018, Lip Bar products are exclusively available at Target locations across the East Coast and one in San Francisco. Hello, sharks. My name is Julie Boucher, and my product is Slossa. Number three, Slossa. The combination of salsa and coleslaw isn't something you come around very often, but who doesn't love a little bit of sweet with some heat? Well, apparently the sharks. Founder Julie Busha pitched her Slossom product in season five to her entrepreneurs, to which she received raving reviews all around, which is why her rejection was so confusing. What's worse is you typically see products featured on Shark Tank more than double in revenue after their episode airs. This is known as the Shark Tank effect. However, Slossa did not. Julie's been led down a long winding road, but through the increased product development to bring new flavors to the chain, as well as being featured on television numerous times, Sloss has managed over time. As of 2018, the delicious condiment has made its way into 8,000 stores across the United States, including Lowe's, Walmart, and Target. Hi Sharks, my name is Lene Schneller, and my name is Ali Colony, and our company is Lene's Gourmet Pickles. Number two. Lene's Gourmet Pickles, aka Miss Pickles Gourmet. Everyone loves a 100-year-old secret family recipe, and the Shark Tanks are no exception. Pitching their recipe for Lene's Gourmet Pickles in season five, while Lene Schneller and Ali Coulihan got through to their stomachs, it was Lene's inability to differentiate themselves from other pickle brands that got them thrown out without a deal. Two years later, in 2015, the company made huge efforts in rebranding to what is now Miss Pickles Gourmet, allowing Lene to secede from presidency and allow Ali Coulihan to take over majority. As of now, not much growth has Occurred. However, Miss Pickles are available online through Amazon. Our company is Rocketbook, and we're seeking $400,000 for 10%. Number one, Rocketbook. The beauty about Shark Tank is that you see ideas you'd never expect in 100 years. It's like, who would have thought there were still more ways to innovate a notebook? Well, appearing in season eight, Jack Epstein and Joe LeMay pitched their reusable digital notebook capable of erasing your works by microwaving it. These two entrepreneurs have claimed to have reinvented the notebook. And despite having 2 million in prior sales to coming onto the show, the sharks just laughed them off. Little did they know, their rejection led them to become a massive success. Shortly after the duo's episode aired, sales reportedly topped out at 10 million. Epstein and LeMay took the opportunity to redesign their rocket book into the Everlasting Notebook, which crowdfunded over 2.5 million in support, and also became Amazon's best-selling notebook of 2016. And with that said, that concludes what are the 15 deals our Shark Tank investors regret not taking. Feel free to comment down below what you thought about today's video, and maybe leave a like if you enjoyed. Also, don't forget to subscribe and push that notification bell to see more film-focused videos similar to this one in the near future. And have yourselves an excellent day.